This is Minecraft trailers versus Minecraft reality. The first thing the Minecraft trailers get wrong is, <laughs> oddly enough, mining. And I'm not just talking about the fact that they're only taking one swing at a time per each block. Maybe they just have high efficiency, I don't know. But more specifically, as you see in the Caves and Cliffs trailer for the part two update, the blocks that they're mining seem to save the progress even if they stop mining them. And unless you install a mod like this, it's not gonna be in the real game. In the final shot of the Minecraft 1.20 trailer, when Steve's running into the cave, we see a few anomalies on the wall here. Unfortunately, without the use of mods, the spiders cannot climb horizontally. And that's not the only issue in this shot, since there's also something weird going on with our skeletons, which is that if we zoom in and look closely, sure enough, none of the skeletons walking towards Steve actually have any bows and arrows here, or any weapons. They're really more walking like zombies, which is made even weirder by the fact that earlier in the trailer, they show skeletons coming out of the sand dunes, and those skeletons have their bows and arrows, but they still got the spider climbing wrong, so some things never change. People often talk about how rare the blue axolotl is, but there actually was one even rarer, and the only place to find the green axolotl variant was in the Caves and Cliffs update for part one. Now, if you blink, you might miss it, but in fact, there it is. And this green variant was also shown off in early promotional images released for the game. And honestly, I don't know how hard it would have been to add in a green axolotl like this anyway. But it also doesn't look like we're ever gonna learn the answer, since when Lady Agnes was asked this question on stream, this is what she had to say. Yes, um, hmm, <laughs> I'm not sure I can answer uh, that right now, I'm sorry. But hey, I guess a non-answer is better than no answer at all, at least I acknowledged it. There must have been some disagreement about how drip leaves work between the trailer team and the actual developers. Since when you watch drip leaves in the trailer, Alex is bouncing off of them, using them to spring from one to the other, but in game, they're not springy, they're quite the opposite, they just droop and fall. But even with that disappointment, the lush caves that she's in still seem a lot better than what Steve's dealing with, so. I guess it's not that much of a loss. But one of the biggest losses in translation is that we don't have splashes like this in the base game. Though through the help of a mod like this by Dr. Rat, there is a way to play with these in the game. And my personal favorite feature of this is that the size of the entity dictates how big the splash is gonna be. So while items might only make a few small splashes like this, if you throw a larger mob into the water, it's gonna be a lot more noticeable. And if anything, having this in the game would make fishing a lot more satisfying, since it hasn't been a lot of fun since 1.16 changed the treasure loot. In the trailer for the wild update, you can see that the chicken's noticeably scared of the warden. I mean, who wouldn't be if it hits like this? But in reality, the chickens are never scared of any mobs in the game, even the ones that are hostile towards them. But that's not gonna stop the warden from attacking it. If it gets too close and creates a sound, even if it isn't scared, the warden will give it a reason to be. And in fact, the only time they ever get scared in the game is if we happen to hit them and then they start running around frantically. Does that mean we're a bigger monster than the warden? Ah, maybe that's fair. When Steve and Alex are crafting netherite to prepare to enter the nether, it's interesting you never actually see them with diamond versions of the items that they start with. But hey, at least the hammer on the smithing table is getting some use. That's more than any of the tools on the crafting table have ever been used for in the game. But who knows, maybe for a time when they were making this trailer, you didn't actually need diamonds to make netherite tools. Which, not needing diamonds is one thing, but I'm more jealous of the fact that they never needed to touch one of the netherite upgrade templates that we need in the new version. In the announcement trailer for the Minecraft livestream in 2022, you'll notice that in this example, there's multiple frogs that are able to ride in one minecart. Which not only doesn't happen with any mob in the base game, but here, we're also able to see the frogs. Since in reality, if you get a frog inside of a minecart, the only way you're gonna be able to see it is from above. They're just too small within the minecart's model. Oh, and also, they got a warden inside of a minecart too. Don't think I didn't miss that. If you take a look at goats in the Caves and Cliffs trailer, you might think that they're a hostile mob, but in reality, they're not nearly as aggressive. And in fact, one of the reasons they seem so docile in the game is that they'll only go after you if you're unmoving. And since players rarely stand still for very long, you really have to try hard to get hit by one of these. Oh, and they also only ram at you every 30 to 300 seconds, which even on the low end of that range, means so you got plenty of time to be safe. This brief moment in a Minecraft trailer is still burned into some player's memory. And the reason for that is this bit of blue dust in the background. And with just those few frames, players went wild with theorizing. Maybe it was some blue alternative to redstone, or a new thing like cobalt. But more likely is that it could have been some unused form of the blue dye. Since in this update, there was a lot of changes made to the dyes that we had. And key among those is making lapis lazuli no longer used for blue dye. But rather, you have to craft it into a separate item. And given the fact that it's the cleric throwing it out, and they're used to using lapis, that seems more likely in my head. And also in the Village of Pillage trailer, you'll notice something interesting if you study the cat. Which, even though most of the mobs in the trailer tend to be animated pretty close to their Minecraft models, a big notable difference is that the cattails aren't rigid in the game, so you'll never see them move this way. Now I know, you also won't see the mobs dancing the way that they do in the trailer, but it's an interesting little visual discrepancy that they normally try to avoid in these things. Oh, and also, cats like to sit on chests, not barrels. Even if you were to download numbers of different shaders, it's almost impossible to recreate the kind of lighting system that we see in the trailer, which makes sense, it's 
pre-rendered. But even if you go through all the effort that low res bone shows off here, we can get the textures right. We can add on torches emitting light from hands, but all the little intricacies are never to be seen. And to me, the most disappointing to that is that we can't create shadows like Alex does with this dead bush. That would open up a ton of fun pranks. <laughs> and this channel, that would be right up our alley. When Alex falls off her roller coaster into the lush cave, you'll notice that this behaves very differently from how minecarts fall in the base game. For one, both the cart and Alex seem to experience some form of proper projectile motion. Whereas in actual Minecraft, entities tend to have immense amounts of drag through the air. And also, the minecart's falling while still angled from the rail. Whereas what would actually happen is that it stays on the same axis and falls level. Now, if you look at any of the trailers for Minecraft, you'll notice that they don't match any of the textures that we see in the game, which luckily is not an issue that we can't solve. Since by downloading this texture pack called Bare Bones, the makers of the pack have done an exquisite job of recreating every texture to look like how it does in the trailers. And while it still looks a bit more simplistic in game than it ever does in a pre-rendered trailer, with the right shaders installed, you can really get this to look pretty close. And personally, my favorite is to pair this with something like the fresh animations pack as well. That'll make your game really feel more alive. Interestingly, this trailer feature used to not work, but now it's actually possible in new versions. Since when 1.14 was shown off, you wouldn't have a baby villager riding a pig. Now with the slash ride command, we're not only able to make that happen, but we can have a whole number of mobs ride on top of each other. And the results get pretty crazy. It's worth playing around with. Now, the whole point of the village and pillage trailer is that the villagers are dancing when they're getting raided, which obviously doesn't happen in the game, at least not with the villagers. Because more peculiar is that the pillagers are actually the one dancing when they finish a raid. Then the piglins also have a chance of dancing when they finish a hoglin hunt. Which begs the question, why were those added in? But when the villagers celebrate you as the hero of the village, the most they do is throw off a couple of fireworks. Seems like a missed opportunity to me. Frankly, this one's wrong on a technicality. Since while it's true that amethyst clusters are able to glow when they're placed like this, the same can't be said for the amethyst blocks or items. And that makes little scenes like this in the trailer completely impossible in base game. Oh, and also Minecraft doesn't have colorful lighting, which is disappointing in more ways than one. In the announcement trailer, for the Buzzy Bees update, you notice that when you peek inside the beehive, you can actually see the bees sleeping. Which not only can you not peek inside of the beehive, but the bees also don't really sleep. And the only mobs that you're gonna see do as much are villagers, bats, and foxes. Which is a shame because I think having a particle effect like this with the little Z's floating up would be a really fun effect for when mobs are snoozing. As you can see, when a gas shoots a fireball at Steve and Alex while they're in the nether, it doesn't just shoot the fireball, but it also recoils back from the action of shooting it. Which in the actual game has never happened. And that just goes to show you Minecraft's lackluster representation of physics. Since by having no recoil, this disobeys Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there should be an equal and opposite reaction. But obviously, gas have never been in the real world either. Maybe this is just how they work. In the trailer for 1.15, you can see an iron golem holding out a poppy to a villager, which will still happen, but the only thing is that the villagers never seem to care about it anymore. Because with all the buggy changes they're adding in 1.14, one of those is that the villagers will never take the poppy when it's given to them. And apparently Mojang didn't get the memo that they broke this in the last update. Since even after it stopped working in 1.14, it made it into this trailer for 1.15. When the LA was shown off in one of the wild update trailers, the LA took Steve to a different location where glowberries were on the floor, which isn't true of LA's. Really, it's more like the behavior for dolphins. In that case, if you give the dolphins certain items, it'll help you find shipwrecks. But in reality, LA's only seek up items up to 32 blocks away from the player. So if the glowberries weren't already next to Steve, there was no hope the LA getting near them. The way portals work in the trailers is that you actually keep the momentum that you have entering the portal on the other side. When in reality, because we have to stay still to actually enter through the portal, all of the momentum we would have had just dies when we're waiting for that transition. And in fact, the trailer's representation seems to work more like the immersive portals mod, except here, we actually can't see through them to the other side, which I get Mojang not putting that into the trailers. It would probably be too confusing. When Steve and Alex die in the Nether update trailer, you'll notice that their stuff seems to vanish with them. But the answer here isn't as simple as using something like keep inventory. Since in that same trailer, when they come back to life with the respawn anchor, they're still missing all of their gear that they lost in the previous shot. And because they respawn, they're not in hardcore mode. I guess they're just playing on some rare difficulty that only exists within Mojang's rendering server. In the trailer for the Trails and Tales update, we see Steve diving into the water to find some of the new Tide armor trims. But when he dives down, he gets noticeably close to the pufferfish. Enough for it to puff up. Which if Minecraft's taught us anything, that also means that Steve would get poisoned. No amount of cool looking armor's gonna change that. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video. So see if they're right and have a good one, all right?